Good evening, guys. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Get on in here. Man, get on in here. I've been looking forward to hanging with you guys on tonight. And uh, this is going to be powerful. We're talking about that was easy this whole year. Our theme for Destiny Center is that was easy. That's what we're talking about. That was easy. And tonight, we're going to get into making transition and changes easy in your life. Get on the phone and text some friends, call some people and tell them the tank is on and we're going to have a good time. Hey, Sister Tanya, that was easy. Yeah, girl, let me know if you can hear me okay. If you can see me okay, I'm down in uh, the man cave. That back there, you often hear me talk about uh, my flight simulator and flying. And so when I'm not in my real airplane flying, I'm usually down here in the man cave, uh, sitting right over there, flying my simulator, just um, practicing my maneuvers and flight planning. And so we're going to talk about checklists and vision. And um, it's all good. So let's um, get some more people on here. We got uh, Sister Tanya. Let us know your name and uh, where you logging in from. And we're on several platforms tonight, so make sure you uh, give us a comment and let us know where you're coming from, your name and where you're coming from. We're on YouTube. We're on Instagram. We're on um, StreamYard. We are on Facebook, of course. And so I just want to say hello to everybody. And uh, super, super Victor Hey. Jewel Tanker, hey girl, what's your name? I want to get your number. That name kind of ring a bell. I'd like to get to know you a little better. Dean Michelle is on. Tanya's on. Uh, Ashley is on. The King family is on and popping. <laughs> DC Nation, we love you all so much. Jewel and I so look forward to always sharing the word of God with you. We're called to do this. And uh, we're excited about this year, 2024. We got big changes coming up. You guys have got big plans in your life. Some of you are going to make more money than you've ever made. You're going to evangelize and get more people saved than you ever have. You're going to mend more relationships. You're going to have more promotions in your life. You're going to write more songs, you're going to write more books, you're going to act in more movies, you're going to create more scripts, you're going to start more businesses, you're going to save more money, you're going to pay off more debt. This is the year, 2024, that you're going to do more. And I want to make sure as your leader, as your mentor, as your friend, as your spiritual father, as your um, coach, that I get the right materials to you so that you can make sure that whatever you're doing this year, you can say at the end of the year, Psh, that was easy. Thanks, Dr. Ben. That was easy. In fact, let's go ahead and practice that. Put that in the comments. Thanks, Dr. Ben. That was easy. <laughs> Thanks, Dr. Ben. That was easy. Oh, Sister Pat, how you doing? Michelle, how you? How you? How you doing? <laughs> How you doing? More in 2004. Thanks, Dr. Ben. That was easy. Hey, Deborah. Hello, uh, streaming family. God bless you all. Listen, let me challenge you. Just because we are not gathering in the sanctuary on Wednesday night, don't you dare get lazy and not show up for this 59 minutes of hour of power during the middle of the week. Already, we've taken away the getting dressed, the traffic, spending money on gas for some of you who drive all the way from Nashville. I mean, we've taken that away. We've made it convenient for you by not having a live service on Wednesday night. So don't play your brother to the left by not jumping on Wednesday night. I'm not talking to you guys because you're on, but I'm just saying in general, we want you to be faithful to the prayer calls. We want you to be faithful to Wednesday night, uh, I'm here for you. Come on now, don't make me waste my time. This is for you. 
I can preach to myself, but God has called me to preach to you all. So get in here on Wednesday night, send out a text, send out some invites, get some other people on. When you come across a good joke, when you come across a good forward, when you come across uh, something funny on Instagram, uh, a reel that's exciting, you don't hesitate to share it. So don't hesitate to share your church, your mentor, your service, your your kingdom community. Okay, that not what that wasn't rebuke. That was just encouragement. Anyway, tonight we are going to be talking about transition. We're going to be talking about transition, and we're going to be talking about transition on Sunday as well. Why? Because we are in the middle of transition, and you are too. Let me tell you something about transition and change. Either you're coming out of a transition, either you're in the middle of a transition, or you are on your way to a transition. Ain't no in-between. Either you just came from it, you're in the middle of it, or on your way to it. It's like going to the grocery store. It's like going to Kroger's. How come black folks always add an S to Kroger? Kroger's. <laughs> when you go to the grocery store, either you're getting out the car on your way into Kroger, or either you are in Kroger, or you're checking out and on your way out of Kroger. Ain't no in-between. Either you're on your way in, you're in, or you're on your way out. Same thing with transition. Same thing with change. Hey, Lucy. Hey, Curtis. Um, hey, McKinney family. Hey, Linda uh, Patterson. God bless you, Mother Linda. Uh, Deborah, love you guys. <laughs> so we're talking about that was easy, and we're talking about transition. And either you come from it, you're in the middle of it, or you are on your way to it. Let's go to... Um, Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes, of course, is the Old Testament, one of my um, favorite books, because it's written by the same guy that brought us Song of Solomon and Proverbs. Okay, chapter 3, verse 1. To everything there is a season, a time to everything, there is a purpose under heaven. So to everything, there is a season. Genesis even talks about while the earth remains, there will be seasons, springtime, harvest, I mean, uh, uh, um, uh, winter, summer, fall, and spring. While the earth remains and while those seasons are here, seed, time, and harvest will always be here. So it talks about the seasons, we are always in some sort of season and that season is never forever. It's always transitional. And so we have to learn how to be adaptable and flexible for transition. You can uh, probably think of someone in your family who was most resistant to change. It might be a change in hairdo. <laughs> Everybody has that auntie that has that same bouffant from her, her prom in 1962. That same. <laughs> Everybody got the auntie that had that French roll and she, uh, didn't have quite enough hair to fill up that roll in the back. So inside there, there was a sock or some 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 other sort of substance to, to just, just help <laughs> fill it out. The auntie and all her pictures from the 60s all the way through 2024 is the same hairdo. She didn't transition. Everyone has that uncle with those suspenders and those high wearing um, pants. Uh, I, I saw somebody in the store the other day and um, actually, it's a friend of ours. He, we used to rent from him when we started our church years ago. And he's an old, old fella, very, very rich guy, very wealthy guy, owns a lot of property. But I saw him in the store, store the other day and he stopped and talked. Do you know he still had Sansa belt pants on, the pants that you don't need a belt? You just pull the little flap over and just button it. And he had a pocket protector with like 100 pins in it. <laughs> 
a pocket protector. When the last time you seen a pocket protector <laughs> with a hundred pins in it? The last time I saw a pocket protector, it was when the insurance uh, man used to actually make house calls and he would come and knock on the door and uh, he'd say, Life of Georgia, it was two different companies. Life of Georgia or um, Independent Life, y'all don't remember this, but the, the, the insurance man would come around every week and, and, and collect the, ins the insurance premium for my parents' uh, life insurance policy, which, is, which was only $1,000. The beneficiary was only $1,000. But the whole 30 years, I've, <laughs> 20 years I've been in that house, this guy come back knocking on the door and, and, uh, and he said, how many weeks you want? Well, it was 250 a week. Give me three weeks because I'm behind. So it, he had to pay 750 on this policy. And he had this pocket protector with 100 pins. That's the last time I remember seeing the, this pocket protector. So uh, uh, th this friend of ours that used to rent us, you know, our building, he kind of stuck in the 70s because he didn't transition his 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 um clothing or his Santa belt pants or auntie didn't transition from her hair well that's just that's just minor what about those who don't transition from being flexible in their spiritual walk to what god is saying today versus what god is saying yesterday because i don't want to be where god was i want to be where god is and we've got those people that uh, resisted cell phones. Oh, you'll never get me to talk on those. Now, you can't imagine being without your cell phone longer than a few minutes. It's part of your hand. In fact, when you leave the house, if you forget your cell phone, you panic and you do a U-turn and you go back because you don't want to be without that cell phone because it's a way of connecting with the rest of the world. But do you know when it first came out, people called it demonic? Uh, uh, it's a one-eyed monster. When television first came out, oh, no, you never get me to watch those. And then when they began to watch those, it, they said, all right, now we're coming out with a colored television. Oh, no, black and white is anointed. But you ain't never get me to watch the color. See, it's some, it's some spirits in the color TV. No, give me black and white. Then we got people that was stuck on the records, you know. Records sound better than than eight tracks. You'll never get me to listen to those eight tracks because they wanted that that sound of the record. And then from VHS uh, to CDs and then uh, cassettes. I mean, you can go on with all these different things. But the thing is that when there ever there's some transition, initially people are resistant to transition, resistant to change. But I want to show you that the Bible tells us that to everything there is a season. And so you have to get used to embracing change and being flexible. You got to be adaptable and flexible for change. The only thing that's really permanent in life is change. Transition is normal. You're not going to stay a baby forever. I mean, that, that is a sickness. That's a sickness if someone stays the same size. You know, you've seen the circus and, the, you know, the 24-inch woman and the 18-inch woman at the, at the fair and you pay money to go in and see. It's odd. It's not normal. That's actually a disease that people are making money and exploiting those people and they call them freaks and they pay money to see them. Look, come look at the tiniest woman in the world. But that's a disease that caused her to be that small. It's normal to grow and be full, you know, so you don't stay the same size physically. You should not stay the same size mentally for those who are slow. There's special education. There's different programs. Why? Because it's not normal to not grow. You got to keep moving and you got to keep transitioning. So why not at the beginning of the year, we're almost almost done with this first quarter. Why not have a report card for yourself and say, hmm, am I really adaptable to change? I got my vision for 2024. 
I made myself part of this whole slogan of more for me in 2024, you know, more in 24. But is it really going to be more in 24 if we're not adaptable and flexible to change? See, my flight simulator back here, when I'm flying in my flight simulator, it helps me stay in tune with constant changes that happen when I'm flying an air, airplane. When people, people don't notice, but when you are uh, on the ground and it's, uh, let's just say the, the, it's at freezing point, uh, it's 30 degrees on the ground, okay? It is very dangerous for an airplane to have ice on their wings. So you wanna make sure you have a de-iced airplane that has equipment that melts the ice from the wings because if you have ice on your wings that keeps the wind from creating lift and the plane really just falls out of the sky. If it's iced up and you don't have ice and equipment, if you have an airplane that does not have ice and equipment, you just have to wait and fly in conditions that are not full of ice. What, what's the, how do you know that? In our training, they train us that when you're on the ground, and when you fly up to different altitudes, for every altitude, every thousand feet that you go up, the the uh, temperature decreased one to three degrees. So if you are thirty degrees on the ground, which is really the freezing point, let, but let's just say you're forty degree, degrees on the ground, that's not freezing. You can fly in that. But every ten, every th thousand feet you go up, the temperature is three degrees colder. So if you're going to fly up to twenty thousand feet, you got to multiply twenty times three. That's sixty degrees colder. It's going to be at twenty at twenty thousand feet than at surface level. So you can't just plan for where you are. You got to plan for where you're going. And so because there's always transition going on. And as you go up higher, it's colder, more resistance. And then when you get into the freezing levels, that means that any possible moisture becomes ice. So if you're flying through a cloud, clouds are just fine on a sunny day. But if it's a wintry day and you fly through clouds, that do that moisture becomes ice on the wings now it becomes now it becomes suicide now you go home to be with the lord because you just didn't have enough sense to plan on transition and subtract 60 degrees from the current temperature that you were at you did not anticipate con conflict you did not anticipate transition and now you're out of here because you just didn't sit and put the paper and the computer out and plan where you were going and that's just an airplane example what about your real life what about planning your health? What about planning your marriage? What about planning your money? What about planning a move? Like our church is preparing to sell its building and move to a more efficient way of doing ministry. You know, brighter lights, more modern building, uh, um, more locations, uh, a faster airplane that will get us out and back faster that we can do more. We're thinking totally different and scientific as we move forward, but we've got to plan it out and we got to make sure that we take our team with us and don't leave them behind. So I want to make sure that you're doing this in your personal life and I want to take time to teach you how to expect transition so that me as your leader, as your Moses, when I come and say, um, God says, Pharaoh, let my people go, get out of that building. We ain't got people out here in the wilderness saying, let's vote in another pastor that can vote, take us back to Egypt. How come we out here? You don't have to raise up no golden calves to worship because you have already been uh, trained how to anticipate transition in your personal life. So when your leader says something that we can do from a spiritual standpoint, you're already ready for it. So that's um, why I want to spend more time with you guys and you got to lock in you got to be here you got to come to church you got to be on time don't be in the parking lot at 10 30. we start service at prayer at 10. 
and and uh, we start um, praise and worship at 10:30. Start teaching at 10 minutes to 11. Don't be out there in 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 the, in the parking lot pulling up at 10:45. No, I want you to be more in tune. It's only three hours on Sunday and one hour on Wednesday. That's four hours out the week, and God has given you 128 hours. You can give three or four of those to God. Amen. All right. So making transition. We talked about change is something that you're either coming from, that you're in the middle of, or you're headed to. We read the scripture on to everything there is a season. To everything there is a season. Um, I think the first place to start when you, when you start talking about transition and change is you got to lock in with the coach that God has sent you to or sent to you. Like I try to contact and connect with my spiritual father, Dr. Rick Layton, um, every single week. Because why? When I'm hearing from him, I'm hearing from God. Uh-oh. When, when your pastor is talking, that is God talking. Oh, no, I don't know if I trust him. Then why are you under him if you don't believe in his ability to hear from God? So you should humble yourself and say, you know something? If Dr. Layton says this, I'm going to roll with it. I'm going to roll with it. If God sent me Dr. Layton and God sent Dr. Layton to me, then when God is talking to me, he's talking through Dr. Layton. Now, he speaks to me directly, too. But if my man of God is speaking, I hush because he is speaking through my man of God. Also, brothers, husbands, check this out. God uses that soft piece of flesh with the beautiful hair and the long eyelids and the beautiful lips that you're married to. Uh-oh, God speaks through them too for you. So if you're going to be an anointed man of God, you've got to learn how to hear from your spiritual father, your spiritual mother, but you also need to learn that God oftentimes speaks through that warm piece of flesh that he's put in your life to the rapture call your wife and also wives for your husbands. Sometimes God will speak a word to your husband that he won't ask you first. So you've got to, you've got to trust that God is speaking through the mentor or the leader that he's put in your life. Let's go to um, second Kings. If you're enjoying what you're hearing tonight, just let me know and say something in the comments. And uh, it'll keep your pastor encouraged. All right. All right. My uh, battery went out on my iPad. And I got my other phone here, which I'm still trying to use, learn how to use the, the Bible on it. Get it off the cartoon in here. All right. Second Kings. Chapter 2, verse 7. 2 Kings 2 and 7. Hey, Siri. 2 Kings 2 and 7. There we go. Better we went out on the iPad and I was all set for y'all. Jewel is a witness that I start preparing for my Wednesday night Bible study about five o'clock. So I got the lights already set up. I don't, I'm already rocking and rolling. So sometimes she walk in and she said, what are you doing? Bible study don't start till seven, but I'm already studying now. I got already got the lights already fixed up. And, and she's like, you all, you are just doing too much, but I had to be prepared for y'all. And I did all that tonight and the iPad lost the battery. So second Kings, second Kings chapter two, Verse nine, I got it. okay. And it came to pass when they were, oh, let's go back a little further. I need to go back a little further. Okay. All right. We've got Elijah and Elisha. Okay. Elijah is uh, the pastor. Elisha is his assistant. He serves him for many, many years. Elijah 
gets ready to go to heaven. He doesn't have to die to go to heaven. God's sending a fiery chariot for him. He's one of, one of only two or three people that went to heaven without having to die. And so this chariot is coming to pick up Elijah. Elijah turns to his faithful servant, his faithful destinite, his faithful uh, Jermaine, his faithful Linda, his faithful Carolyn, his faithful Tanya, his faithful Jewel, his faithful Ashley, his faithful uh, Deborah or Pat. You know, if he turns to his faithful member or partner or e-member or leader and he says, what can I do for you? And Elijah tells Elisha, what can I do for you? Elisha says to him, don't give me anything except a double portion of your spirit, okay? So that is the mentor uh, transferring instruction, power, increase, success, anointing to the mentee. You all are the mentee tonight, and I'm the mentor. Last night, I was on the broadcast with Dr. Rick B. Layton, and he was the mentor, and I was the mentee. I was his special guest. We were talking about sonship, and I, I was the mentee to him, and he's the mentor. Well, Dr. Layton is the mentee to Dr. Creflo Dollar, and Dr. Dollar is the mentor, and Dr. Layton is the mentee. See how this thing works? And so you have to humble yourself and not put yourself on the same level with your mentor so you can be able to receive from your mentor as a mentee. So Elijah said that when you see me leave, I pray if you see me leave, then my double spirit will come upon you. And so verse five, and the sons of the prophets that were at Jericho came to Elisha and said to him, Knowest thou that the Lord would take away thy master one day? And he said, I know it, but I'm going to hold my peace. And so he knew there was a day that was coming when his spiritual father would not be there. And he knew that if he saw him ascend to heaven, he would receive that mantle. Verse 9, and Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smoked the waters and they were divided. So he took his mantle and he performed a miracle before he left. But wouldn't you know, when Elijah gave his mantle to Elisha and he left, Elisha was able to do the same thing with that mantle that Elijah did. So that same spirit that was on Elijah came on Elisha. Verse 11, I like it. And it came to pass as they went on as it as they as they still went on and talked that behold there appeared a chariot of fire horses of fire and parted them both asunder and elijah went up in a whirlwind into heaven get this and elisha saw it and he cried my father the chariot of israel and the horsemen thereof and he saw him and he took hold of his own clothes and he ran and he was just kind of disgusted and just kind of depressed because his spiritual father was going on to heaven. And he took the mantle that Elijah fell from him and he stood by Jordan. And he took that same mantle that fell from him and smote the waters. And the same thing that happened to Elisha happened to Elijah when he went with that same anointing. And so he was able to part, Elijah was able to perform miracles and part waters, but when he put that anointing and that mantle on Elisha, he was able to do the same thing. Fast forward 6,000 years later, Jesus was talking to his disciples and he said, these things that you see me do, you shall do them always. Jesus was always in transition. When he came, and he was in Bethlehem. He didn't come to be a baby forever. He did not come for the three kings to bring him gifts forever. He did not come to, to lay in a manger and, and have Christmas every year. He didn't come to remain a baby. He didn't come to be 12 years old sitting in the synagogue saying, I'm about to be about my father's business. He knew he was growing up. He knew he was transitioning. Then he gets into his 30s and he starts walking around and doing miracles. He wasn't doing miracles as a baby. He was not doing miracles as a 12 year old, but he began to do miracles as a 30 year old and go around and 
healing everybody that would agree with him. There were some places that he went, he could do very few miracles because the people's uh, thinking was not transitional and they were not in agreement. So the Bible says there are some places that Jesus went, asked God himself and could do very few miracles because the people's thinking was not transitional. The people's thinking was not in agreement in faith. He said, ye of little faith. So he, he brushed the dirt from his hands and his feet and he would go on to another city because the people in that city were just bound by tradition and question marks and doubt and unbelief. And he said, whatever, I'm going over here where somebody else is going to believe. That's Jesus. Now, you know, if Jesus had a problem doing miracles when, when he was in an environment of doubt, what chance does Tankard have? What chance does Jewel have? What chance do you have if you're not in an environment of, a, of agreement and transition? So even Jesus knew that he was, his time on earth was going to be short. He began to prophesy and train up the disciples because he knew that was a day that he would ascend into heaven. And he also did the same thing that Elijah did to Elisha and said, when I go, whatever you see me do, you'll do it too, and you'll do it even better. That's transitional because at first you're sitting around watch, watching God do everything, but now God is saying, you can do what I do because you're little gods. You are, are little means. You are a big G. And I'm the big G. And so I'm training you guys to look at yourself this year as being more powerful. I want you to transition from a victim to a victor. In fact, I love miracles. I love miracles. But I believe that we're transitioning into a season to where we're not just expecting a miracle but we are the miracle and we are performing the miracle. I believe we've outgrown our stage. I believe we've outgrown our church location. I believe we've outgrown old thinking of by and by when the morning come, uh, Jesus is gonna come save us from this, this hell bent world. I believe we're in the transition of movers and shakers and change makers. I believe we're in a season of being a true world changer. It's time out this, this, uh, of us talking about Destiny Center, 10 point master plan and having several locations. It's time to plant those churches. It's time out for us to talk about how Destiny Center has um, several um, Destiny Center owned businesses. It's time to have the businesses. It's time for people to be renting from us. It's time for us to be like Dr. Bill Winston and we in the middle of the shopping plaza and our church is in the middle in a modern building and Pizza Hut and Subway and all these other people are renting from us. That's where I'm going. That's where I'm going in my thinking. But you have to go there. Your, your mind has to go there before you're behind goes there. So if you are in agreement with where we're going, give me an amen in the comments and we'll keep on moving. We are in transition and I am super excited about this year. Now you can't be in transition and, and do what God has called you to do without a mentor. So we have, we have a, a covering. We're not bastards. We're not out here doing what, need, what we want to do. We are an independent church. Destiny Center was birthed in me and Jewel's home. So Destiny Center is being in Jewel Tankett and being in Jewel Tankett is Destiny Center. So Destiny Center is wherever we go. Destiny Center is not a location because we've had three locations. So if Destiny Center was 2803 Pavilion Place uh, where we started our church in our home, our old home, then once we move from 2803 Pavilion Place, then Destiny Center it, um, is out of business because, or still back there at Pavilion. No, Destiny Center is in me and Jewel. So when, when we moved and started having services over in Lebanon, that's where Destiny Center was because that's where we were. Now, then we moved from Destiny Center from Lebanon to Armory Drive. Destiny Center moved because Ben and Jewel, our Destiny Center that we started is in our heart, is our vision. And so we moved over to Armory Drive and that's transition. So that's where Destiny Center 
went to Armory Drive. Then we went to Memorial and we've been at Memorial almost 20 years now. And so we, now we're getting ready to go wide. We're getting ready to go higher. We're getting a faster airplane so we can go further. We, uh, we want to launch out people, interview people who are ready to be pastors. We want to place people in different areas. It's time out to, to go wide. It's, not, it's time out for just one small location, an old hundred um, year old church paying all these old bills, these um, fixing these old roofs and and listening to these creaks. You know, if you go to Destiny Center in the middle of the night and just sit and, and listen, you, you can't be sitting there for about, about an hour before you hear something moving. You're like, what, what's going on? It's a building that got creaks and it moves. It's time out for that old Dracula castle. Thank God for it. But it's time to go wide with our ministry. It's time to go wide with our vision. It's time to go wide and thank God for Rick B, Dr. Rick B. Layton. Thank God for Creflo Dollar. Thank God for Bill Winston. Thank God for Joel Osteen. Thank God for Jerry Seville. Thank God for Jesse DePlantis because these guys have already went before us and knocked down trees. And so we see that there is so much more we can achieve if we just keep a transitional mindset. And I believe that the people that are called to serve a destiny center, I believe you're supposed to be millionaires. I believe it. I believe you're supposed to be debt free. I said this on Bravo on our reality show when we started the show with Europe with NBC back in 2013. I spoke into the camera and I said, I believe that everybody that's a believer can be a millionaire if they want to be. That thing went viral. Boy, they started coming up against me. Who do he think he is? This man talking about everybody's supposed to be a millionaire. I, but I believe it. And I'm still standing on that. Now, get this. If you don't want to be a millionaire, you won't have to worry about it. Because that's not something that you stumble upon. That's something that you have to be intentional about. So if, <laughs> if you don't want to be a millionaire, you ain't got to fight. You ain't got to get mad. You ain't got to cuss nobody out. You ain't got to send no emails, no texts. You ain't got to post nothing. You ain't got to come. You ain't got to say a word. If you don't want to be a millionaire, just sit still. There you have it. Non-millionaire status right there. Wide open. 100% return. <laughs> but if you are supposed to be a millionaire, why? Because I believe you're supposed to have more than enough so that you can be a miracle maker for other people. You can't pay off somebody else's debt if you're struggling from check to check. Come on now. So I believe the people within my sphere of influence are supposed to be wealthy with a good attitude. A lot of times when you talk about millionaires and billionaires, you automatically think that it's supposed to be arrogant and mean and selfish. No, no, no. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about good prosperity. I'm talking about uh, good increase. I'm talking about kingdom increase. I'm talking about where you are so successful that you wake up in the morning looking for somebody to be a blessing to. I, let me tell you how uh, happy we were when Kenneth Copeland, he's done it 29 times, but I'm one of the 29 times that this man gave us a large, expensive gift, an airplane, a twin engine, Cessna, Golden Eagle. Just write that down. Put that in the comments. Put Cessna 421 Golden Eagle, C-E-S-S-N-A, Cessna 421 Golden Eagle. Eagle. Just I want you to get used to writing stuff like that. Just put in the comments, Cessna 421 Golden Eagle airplane. That's what he gave us. He didn't have to give that to us. He gave us a 421 Golden Eagle aircraft valued at more than a quarter of a million dollars. Man, that's a blessing. But before we even had time to fly it, Deborah Hill, God told me that this airplane is not for you. This airplane is not for Destiny Center. This airplane is not for you and Jewel Tanker. This airplane 
is for Dr. Rick Layton and Refreshing Point Ministries, Shreveport, Louisiana. You are to give this airplane to your spiritual father, to your Elijah for his use. I'm like, what? And my wife was like, I don't know if you heard from God on that, honey, because we've been flying in these little small crop dusters for years. And now we finally get an air conditioned, pressurized, high flying airplane. And we supposed to give it away? I don't know, baby. You need to fast and pray. I didn't have to fast and pray about that. I knew it in my heart that God told me to give it to my spiritual father. Now, let's go to, to Shreveport. When I told Dr. Layton that Kenneth Copeland, Brother Kenneth Copeland had given us an airplane, and I told him what kind of plane it was, Dr. Layton said that the Holy Ghost told him, that's your plane. And he panicked because he felt like he was walking in, in covetousness. He like, I, I love Ben. This is my son. Why am I coveting this gift that this man gave me? Kenneth Copeland, Copeland is like the Abraham of our time in faith, big faith teacher. And he has given this airplane to my son. And here I am thinking that it's supposed to be for me. And he was depressed about it for three days. He was so depressed. He told his wife, he said, Barbara, I believe that that airplane is supposed to be mine, but I feel bad because I feel like I'm coveting my own son's airplane. So when I called him and told him, Dr. Layton, I, I can't sleep. I, I believe the Holy Ghost said that this airplane is supposed to be yours. That's when we connected our spirits and he knew it was confirmation that what God had told, told me is what he had put in his spirit. So that restlessness that he had in his spirit, that was actually the Holy Ghost preparing him for what God had told me to do. Why wow, isn't that powerful? Well, why did God tell me to do that? Because he knew that he had a $2 million airplane that was coming to us this season. This season, come on now. He, he had a two, and I needed to put that seed in the ground because a, a seed uh, um, reproduces after its own kind. You can't put a tomato seed in the ground and expect peanuts. You can't put squash in the ground and expect rutabagas. So if I'm wanting to believe God for a $2 million airplane, the seed for a $2 million airplane is a $250,000 airplane given away that won't benefit me at all. See how God is working? And so when you are connected with your spiritual covering and they're in transition, that means you're in transition too because I'm transitioning from $20 offerings, $100 offerings, $10,000 offerings to $250,000 offerings. That means you're transitioning from that, that old school $5 offering or that old school got to go to the bathroom whenever it's time tired than offering. You're transitioning into waiting for the next opportunity to be a blessing. You're transitioning to actually writing out a check for $10,000, $20,000, $50,000 so you can get used to writing it. Even if you keep it in your Bible and pray over it, you're transitioning in your mind to where I'm moving out of the victim and it into the big tour mentality because I'm walking in transition. That's y'all. Oh, this is a series. I can't do it all tonight, but I'm fired up because I believe all 145 of you all that are on tonight are going to walk in transition and going to see the beginnings of great things happening in your life this week as you change your thinking. In fact, whatever you're believing for in the next 24 hours to come to pass in your life, go ahead right now and declare it and decree and put it in the comments right now. I declare within the next 24 hours, don't even put it down the road and make it safe like this year or within the next three years. Or, no, no. Within the next 24 hours, what are you expecting God to do in your life? Think big, talk big, transitional thinking right now. Begin to talk big, think big, and connect with your leader. Connect with those prayer partners that are on the line with you and begin to declare in detail what you are expecting in 24 hours and watch God meet you at your faith. If you're scared to say it, you're scared to receive it. But if you're bold enough to say it, watch God begin to make it happen in your life. Glory to God. All right, the next point. Let's see how much time I got here. Thank you, Jesus. Ooh, I'm running out of time. 
Uh, uh, let's go ahead and begin to receive our offering tonight. I'm I'm out of time, y'all. I, I, I thought it was 7.30. It's 7.50. Uh, I just declare supernatural victory over you. Go ahead and begin to sow a seed toward whatever you're declaring. Whatever you're declaring on tonight, I want you to sow a do-good seed. Sow a seed that moves you. Sow a seed that moves you, because if it doesn't move you, it won't move God. We, you know, we sow 10% of our increase every week into the house of God. And that you expect God to open up the windows of heaven and give you ideas and concepts more than you can receive in your lifespan. But I want you to sow a 24 hour seed. I want you to sow a seed tonight that shakes heaven and hell. I want you to go ahead and put a seed in your hand tonight and sow it. Our team is putting those opportunities how you can sow into our church, our destiny center. It's money, uh, dollar sign, Destiny Center, TN. Um, if you're so, there's PayPal, there's Zelle, uh, there's text to give. And so our team will put that up. If you're going to sow directly into me as your teacher tonight, my cash app is money sign Ben Tanker. But whatever you're sowing, I want you to do it with an attitude of expectation that this is going to move your heart toward God in the next 24 hours. You can't pay for a miracle. You can't make God do anything. But when you sow a seed on a thought and you sow a seed on a dream, it keeps you focused on your faith and your faith will make you whole. If you sow a seed big enough, you're not going to walk away from that expectation. You're not going to walk away from that faith. It's going to keep you focused. Giving and fasting keeps you locked in for what's next in your life. Write that in the comments. Giving and fasting keeps you locked in for what's happening next in your life. Your faith will make you whole. So giving and uh, fasting keeps you targeted, keeps you off of Netflix, keeps you into the word, keeps you on your vision. And it is that faith that makes you whole. If your faith is strong and you're able to part the waters, and all that stuff, then you don't need to tithe and you don't need to give and you don't need to fast. But if your faith needs to be built, then those are things that help you build your faith faster so that you can see God's hand in your life. And I just decree, I just decree and declare that 24 hour turnaround transition. I declare that you are not locked into old thinking, that you're not locked into wilderness grumbling wilderness questions, wilderness reluctance, you know, where the Israelites were out in the wilderness for 40 years just because they would not follow the leader. I declare that you are walking in supernatural partnership, expectation, you're being part of the promise, not a part of the problem, and watch God transition in your life individually, personally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. And watch how that overflow flows into you as you serve your church. For those of you who are visiting with us tonight online from other cities, other countries, other areas, I declare that you are locked in with your pastor like never before. Thank God that you're here tonight and you're receiving revelation. But I call you faithful in your local assembly as well. We appreciate e-partners. We appreciate the virtual opportunity. But I call you into a local body, wherever you are, to where you can be a blessing and you can make a difference and you can follow that leader as well. There's enough to go around. I don't miss out on anything by sending you to a local church. You still can watch me online, but you still can be faithful to your local church. There's enough to go around. I'm not selfish. So I just declare a supernatural increase. We have the online giving cash app that's in the center. Money Sign Destiny Center TN. We have Zelle Info at DestinyDome.com. We got Tithely Text to Give 615-567-5571. We got PayPal, which is Destiny Center at BellSouth.net. And if you want to sow into Dr. Ben, myself, that's Money Sign um, Ben Tanker. We declare, however you're sowing tonight, that it will shake heaven and hell and that you will receive a 24-hour boost in your faith and that I call you into transition and power and increase in Jesus' name. I thought Jules was going to come down here and speak to you guys, but um, you'll catch your own prayer later this week. And I just declare supernatural victory. Uh, we try to get off these broadcasts 
by eight o'clock so that you can come back. I want you to be faithful in our weekly broadcast. Make sure that you pause for this 59 minutes because I'm going to be sharing from my heart. I'm going to teach like I never taught before. I am going to be teaching this from the pulpit on Sunday. Thank you so much for you all that are in the building. Make sure you grab a friend. 10 o'clock is prayer. 1030 is praise and worship. 1510 Memorial Boulevard for now. And God has taken us to a greater and wider place and a wider space in our church, in our ministry, and our outreach. We love you all so much. We're so very, very proud of you. Make sure that you hit me with the comments, hit me with the testimonies. Let our staff and team know what these services are doing for you. Don't hide the blessings. Let us know what's going on so we can spread the word that Jesus is Lord. If you have not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, just uh, repeat after me, Father, I believe that you sent your son, Jesus, to die for me. I believe that he rose on the third day. I make a decision to live for you because you died for me. I speak with my mouth and I believe with my heart. Therefore, I believe I am saved in Jesus name. Amen. If that's the first time you've done that and you're saved and you're in the kingdom. Let us know so we can celebrate and throw a party because I know heaven is already celebrating. Go ahead and finish your sowing and your seed comments as to what your aha moment was uh, tonight. And we're going to jump out off of here in just a minute. Let us know what you learned tonight, what changes you're going to make, and what you are expecting in the next 24 hours. And I call your seed blessed. I call your family blessed. I call you healed. Supernatural increase, favor in every area. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all. I'm looking at the comments, Sister Pat. Uh, she says, thank you. She said, giving and fasting in my life keeps me locked into super to the supernatural with my pastors. Uh, Kadai King says, giving and, uh, and fasting keeps me locked in. Uh, let's see here. Tanya says, giving and fasting keeps me locked in. Uh, Misha says, I declare 24 hours new speaking engagements with 10x level of finance influence impact. We agree with you. Callan says, I decree in the next 24 hours, I'm expecting that phone call for the job I've been waiting for. We call it done, Callan, in Jesus' name. Deborah says, giving and fasting keeps me locked in. Hallelujah. Kadai King says the same thing. Y'all put your victories on here. We want to agree with you in Jesus' name. All right, we're out of time. That's 8 o'clock. I love you guys so much. I'm going to get back to flying the simulator, meditating, getting ready for Sunday's message. We declare a supernatural victory on you this entire week. Amen. Thank you all for joining us. And we'll see you next time. I'm Dr. Ben, and I approve this message. Amen. Love you guys. Take care now.